Hello, I'm George Landis, and this is the Landis Performance YouTube channel. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the video, and leave comments if you have any questions. We would like your feedback on other topics we can show in future videos. Thank you. Today we're going to discuss IAC, Idle Air Control Motor. It's a small electric motor, goes to a passageway in the throttle body and bypasses air around the throttle blade to control idle speed. Very important to keep the vehicle from stalling, for fast idle, for startup, and to keep the car from stalling on DXL stops. In this video, we're going to discuss two things with the IAC control. One being the possibility of the, the IAC not being wired correctly for its type and also throttle body, throttle blade position in reference to IAC control. The first half of the video we're going to discuss wiring pinouts for different IAC motors and in the second half of the video we'll discuss how to adjust the throttle body to have the proper IAC settings to eliminate stalling. So if you have a car that's stalling please watch the entire video. For this case study, we have a 383 small block Chevrolet with a magnet charger, supercharger on it. It has a aftermarket throttle body. And that is the IAC motor right there. Okay, so now we're going to connect to the car and then we'll start it and we'll watch the IAC control. The customer is complaining that this vehicle will not cold start, hot start, and idles kind of crappy. Okay, we've configured our gauges to read air fuel, coolant, temp, IAC position, and RPM. That way we'll be able to see where the IAC is being commanded and what the RPM is doing. Okay, we started the car. As you can see, the IAC is commanding 40% at idle. The idle speed is a little bit higher than typical. Let's see what it does when we put a load on it. You can see now we put a load on it by turning the AC on and the idle speed dropped. It did not stay the same. And the IAC position is higher. So the computer is trying to bring the idle back up by adjusting the IAC position. However, it's not working, so that's what we have to find out. Okay, so with the engine turned back off, but key on, and the Holly software connected, we're gonna go to IAC Control, and we're gonna go to Parked. And on this screen, you can see this is a one-dimensional screen. You have idle air control, parked position, versus coolant temperature, and right now, it was sitting at the parked position. So to see if this IAC is working, we're going to command 100% all the way across. Now we're going to turn the key off and pull the IAC out and see what position it's actually in. With the IAC out, we can see that it is not all the way retracted, so our IAC is not working properly. On this style, idle air control motor there can be two versions an LS early LT GM sensor and a Chrysler sensor that is also the same one that Holly uses so this wiring connection is where we have to check to see which way it is wired so here is a pin chart that shows the four purple wires with different color tracers that control the IAC. The first section is the pin location at the header of the ECU and the other three are different IAC connector setups. So we have found that this harness was set up for a Holly and we think that the sensor is a GM. We repinned the connector plugged into the IAC and then turned the vehicle on and as you can see it is now retracted. Now we'll go to the software and command zero and see if it controls it. Now we've commanded 
zero and you can see that the plunger has come out of the IAC trying to close off the port. So now we know that this sensor is a GM style IAC motor and we now have it pinned correctly. So now we'll put it back in and make final adjustments. Okay, so now before we start the car, we need to fix this. I'm going to minimize this screen. We're going to open another tune. The same vehicle, same tune, just in another window. And we're going to copy and paste the, this. Close that. We come back here. Paste. Okay, so now we're ready to start the vehicle and see how it works now. As you can see, we had a very fast idle because the IAC was pulled back and now the IAC is at zero position and we're sitting just a tick above our base idle. So now we need to let the vehicle warm up fully. Right here you can see that the vehicle still has additional fuel going into it because of the coolant is low. We need to wait till this reads 100% and then there's no additional fuel being added then we can adjust the idle. Okay, so now we can see coolant enrichment is 100%, so that's zero. Our IAC is still at, a, at zero, and we're idling at 1,000, 1,100, kind of bouncing around. So we need to now check our idle speed, and our target is 810. So that means that the throttle blade is too far open and the IAC has no control. That's because the way it was working before, they had to raise the base idle to keep the car running. Now we're going to lower the speed to get the IAC to work properly. Okay, so now we've lowered the stop screw on the throttle body to close the blade. You can see now that the engine is idling around the target idle speed. And if you watch the IAC, it will every now and then bounce up to 2-3%. This is the best scenario. If you can keep the IAC below 10, that's an excellent place. Because now as we add load, you're going to see it's going to jump up, but the engine RPMs will stay the same. Now we've added the air conditioning and now you can see the IAC is opened up farther and we're still maintaining the proper idle speed. If we were to put it in gear, it will even show more. So that is how to diagnose the idle air control motor and how to adjust the throttle blade to be in sync with the IAC control for correct engine running parameters. A couple pieces that I would like to show you. Under your idle, ICF, you've got idle parameters. Here's your idle spark, and what this does when it's enabled is it will make the ignition advance or retard from your target to help control and stabilize idle. You can see that in the graph as we are running the engine if you back up the video. We have IAC control, you have three different style, stepper, which is what the GM is, pulse with modulate, which is like a Ford two wire, any two wire IAC, and drive by wire. On a drive by wire, the throttle blade is the IAC, so it's all in the software. And then we have advanced idle control, and these are basically different PIDs set up to try. If we go to custom, Here's the PID controls, and 
this is gives the control of how fast and how slow the sensing and the speed of the IAC motor is. We have a 1D table idle speed, which is target idle speed versus coolant temperature. This is where you get your fast idle for cold for cold start. And then we have the IAC parked, which is the parked position of the stepper motor before the vehicle starts. Or when you're driving down the road and the idle the TPS is above, I believe it is 5% then it goes into the parked position so that when you come to a stop it's already open to catch the engine as it comes back down to idle. Another tip for the guys that like to have a lot of tools in their toolbox this is a OTC idle air control motor driver tester. You can use this in lieu of the test I just performed. It's simple to use it already comes with two connections, GM TBI and Chrysler AMC, which is also a Holly. And you can see if we plug this in on Chrysler wiring, it goes in, uh, it goes out, and it goes out. No matter which way I push the switch, we switch it to GM. Now we can retract it we can extend it. So this is the proper wiring for this unit. Just a quick easy tool to save you a lot of aggravation. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe to our channel, like the video, and if you have any comments please leave them below. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.